Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at Manjaro 21.1 GNOME. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be entered into the contest to win the ASUS ZenBook 14 that we're giving away on August 31st, 2021. And it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and you can always unsubscribe later. Well, we've loaded into a virtual machine. This is Manjaro GNOME and this is what you're met with right off the opening we're going to go ahead and click on that workspace you have your welcome to Manjaro screen it basically covers documentation your readme your release info your wiki support you can go directly to forums here should you have any issues with the system or you've got questions that needs to be answered you just zip on over to forums and they will get with you really quickly I've had real good luck using their forums discover software mailing lists and then on the project you can get involved you can look at the development and then you can also donate to the project if you like it and you want to support them you just go right there so we're going to go ahead and close out and right off the bat here's our desktop as you can see we've got the dock down here it doesn't hide like it does on some of your standard gnome distribution it's one of the things i do like about this version of manjaro and this version of gnome so let's go see what we have out of the box you've got gear email You've got maps, under accessories, you have an icon browser, you have transmission for your BitTorrent, you have GTK hash, your software token is there, right there. You've got Covantum Manager, you've got weather, um, you have help, main menu, and then you have your tweaks to where you can go in and you can do different changes to your GNOME environment. You can go over here and change the themes of your applications, your cursor, icon, shell, sound, background you can change the image adjustment of the background lock screen you can change the image and adjustment and then fonts you can come over here and change your fonts now what I like about this distribution if the fonts are a little small you can just go over and actually scale things up a little bit and it'll make things easier to read uh, keyboard and mouse you've got all these options right here you can show extended input sources Emacs input compose key overview shortcut mouse you can change your acceleration profile you can change the pointer location middle click paste you can adjust it if you've got a middle click or you've got the the scroll wheel that you can push and click you can set that as uh, middle click to copy paste touchpad you can disable it while typing so it doesn't get in your way and then your mouse click emulation you got your startup applications deactivating the lock screen desktop items things like that you got your top bar now on the top bar you can have an activities overview hot corner which is if you go over here you can see it light up and you can click on that if you want to or you can take it out I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on battery percentage if you click that on you'll see up here it'll show your battery percentage up in the top bar clock you can have weekday on the clock if you want to you can click it and you see it adds Wednesday up here up top you can add date or you and you can also add seconds and then on calendar you can add week numbers if you would like to windows title bar you can double click to maximize and or you can double click to minimize for those of you who don't know that use gnome because sometimes you will not have the minimize maximize buttons up here and people will download genome tweaks just so they can add those buttons but as everybody knows in genome all you got to do is double click on the top bar and then double click it'll maximize or minimize and then we're going to go to windows you can attach model dialogs edge tiling center new windows resize with secondary click window action key so there's a lot inside here that you have adjustment and ways to customize it and then your workspaces dynamic workspaces static workspaces workspaces on primary display only or workspace span displays so let's go ahead and close out of that let's go back over here we've got layouts now this is something I wanted to go over real quick layouts you open this up and right now we have the new Manjaro layout now what you can do is you can come in here and choose whatever layout you would like to use if you want to go to the old Manjaro legacy genome layout you just click on it apply it and as you can see it's moved over here you open this up and now your workspaces are actually vertical right here okay now you can also go back to layouts and I'll show you the difference because when you go there and apply and you go 
Here, your workspaces are horizontal up top, so it's whatever your personal preferences are. Let's go back to layout. Now, you can go over here and you can go to a traditional layout and apply it. And as you can see, the top bar disappears. It comes to the bottom. And then you have a traditional menu mode right here. You can change that however you want to. Okay, let's go back to layouts. You can do the Unity like they used to have on the Legacy Ubuntu. And then you would have a bar that's over here. And then your top bar would return to the top. Or tiling. Let's apply that. which would have everything in a tile format. So it's really what your personal preference is and how you would like to say it, set it up. I'm going to go ahead and go back to Genome. Okay, so let's open this back up. We just looked at layouts. You've got Lollipop. You've got Manjaro User Guide. Then you've got Office. Now this is, comes with only Office out of the box. I generally use LibreOffice. Only Office is a good desktop document and presentation app i'm going to have to go down here to settings i'm going to go have to do auto scaling up to 150 and go ahead and use a dark theme and apply that and as you can see it gets a lot bigger but that's only office now the kick on only office is they do offer cloud they do offer automatic backup and things like that but they do charge so it's not completely free and open source so that's one of the Objections some people have using it. It is a very good looking program, and I'm going to cover it in an upcoming video System tools You've got your system tools that you need You got Manjaro notification system long main menu caffeine System monitor now I'm doing a little something different now. I've only assigned it two CPUs and two gigabytes of memory so I'm running at 1.3 gigabytes at 2.2 assigned and my CPU is running at about 7% so that's not too bad actually I wanted to test it on a lower spec machine there has been a couple hitches here and there but that's expected with the amount of specs that I've issued this machine and then you've got your web apps this is something that's come over from Linux Mint to where you can go online open an application or open a website up and turn it into an application and it comes with cheese now add and remove software let's open that up it's the same software that you're used to dealing with on any Manjaro distribution you can still go over here and open this up go to your preferences you can check for updates you can set how often it checks for updates automatically download updates which I do not recommend you always want to approve anything that gets downloaded uh, and then you've got your advanced where you can check available disk space remove unrequired dependencies do not check for updates when installing and enable downgrade and then third party of course you can come in here and enable your arch user repository your AUR you can enable that you can also enable flat packs and you can enable snaps and that's straight out of the box but that's what you expect with Manjaro they try to make it easy for you to be able to do the things that you need to do and let's go over here to files this is your file manager you can't move these these are locked in place you can't switch your order here which in KDE I really like but it's not a deal killer for me and let's go back home you can see your folders up here now if those folders are a little small and you want them a little bigger all you got to do is come up here to the arrow drop down and you'll see the percentage mark right here you can go ahead and up that if you want depending on how big you want them you can sort them from A to Z or you can sort them from Z to A or last modified first modified size type or you can just reload and then you can come over here and you got options to do things in the file manager you can show the sidebar or not show the sidebar and then you can show your hidden files it's that easy and then you have your preferences keyboard shortcuts there's your preferences sort folders before files expandable folders in list view and create links delete permanently you can come in here and customize this to your heart's content and this is files 40.2 let's go ahead and close out of that you got a text editor already installed and then terminal let's go ahead and open in terminal and take a look and see if we've got htop it's not installed top top is installed it's showing that I'm using 727 megabytes of RAM at present there is 1113 megabytes in the buffer cache and then there's 231.9 that are free your screenshot tool is right there you can capture you can do the full screen window or selection you know you click on your selection take your screenshot 
pick it, boom, screenshot is taken, and then you can store it, copy to clipboard, or save it. So let's cancel out of that. Let's look at some of the accessories. You've got caffeine, firmware, extensions, archive manager, clocks. You can set your weather up. You can search for any city. Let's go Dallas, Texas, Love Field. Let's put that in there, and your weather's right there. And then when you close that and you open your calendar, it will uh, put your weather down here eventually. And then you'll have all that information when you open your calendar and your time and date. You can schedule your events. You can add world clocks if you would like. Your notifications will be kept here. And then your weather will be right down here. Now, Gear Email. I do like Gear Email. It is a good-looking email client. One thing that does perturb me with Gear Email is you do not have the option out of the box to set open remote images, which means if you get an email with an image attached and you open it, it will not open it automatically. It will prompt you to click on a button to open the remote image or open the remote image from the sender always. You have to do that consistently with different senders. I like being able just to switch that option on and have it do it by itself, but Geary's still a good looking uh, email client. That was my basic quick look at Manjaro GNOME 21.1. I think it is a great looking operating system and it is a rolling release. Updates will be issued and you can keep right on going. You don't have to do a reinstall every six months to a year. I thank you guys for watching the video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. That will enter you into the Asus ZenBook 14 giveaway that we're doing on August 31st, 2021. I appreciate you watching the video. And I'll see you in the next video.